Hi guys, welcome back to that Ethan Guy. Today we're going to discuss uh, it's a different different little review. So it's a fan made online review. So basically, what it is is um, two brothers, Vince and James Coleman. Coleman Films on Twitter and YouTube uh, are fans of Halloween and they released two short films uh, Halloween Inferno Part 1 and Halloween Inferno Part 2 that ties into the continuity of the current timeline of the Halloween franchise i.e. 1978 and 2018 and obviously when it's going to come out this year Halloween Kills and next year Halloween Ends so Basically, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a love for the Halloween franchise. I mean, not only, when you watch these uh, two short films, not only do they feel very realistic, very cinematic, very Halloween-esque uh, short films, they don't feel fan-made, they feel real, they feel honest, they feel as if they're part of the David Gordon Green and Dan McBride um, universe, uh, filmmaking, etc. Um, I mean... Like they are fantastic films. I mean, I've been I've been wanting to review them for ages now. Uh, I even tweeted uh, James Coleman saying I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. Um, part two came out about I think it was maybe two months ago, and I was like, right, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it, and just I've never had a chance to do it, so I'm going to do them now. So I'm doing my review now. So um, yeah, I mean, when it comes to the part one, starts off where basically Halloween 2018 ended. Laurie Strode burns her, burns her house down, she escapes with her daughter Alison, uh, no sorry, <laughs> her daughter uh, Karen and the granddaughter Alison um, on the back of a pickup truck and that's it, it ends and obviously Michael just burns or we assume burns and then obviously he escapes because obviously Halloween kills wouldn't be happening if it if he died um, and Halloween ends as well, part three. So we are getting the kind of in between Halloween 2018 and Halloween Kills in Halloween Inferno Part 1, Part 2 and at some point hopefully Part 3 um, There is a, an online Indigo uh, f GoFundMe sort of page for Halloween Inferno Part 3 but it's since been closed assuming because obviously the Covid situation, lockdown etc I mean it would have been, been good to see we can assume Part 3 would have come out before Halloween Kills so it just ties in perfectly, that trilogy kind of ties in perfectly to Halloween Kills so yeah, so it starts off with the, we assume the, the Strode house burning down. Michael then attacks some guy in his pickup truck. Uh, he's burnt. It's kind of, the way the mask is, it's, it's kind of burnt the way that you'd expect it to look like in Halloween Kills. I mean, we, can, we obviously can assume, I mean, it's a no-brainer, that the Michael Myers mask will be burnt to a crisp of some sort. Um, then we get a full body shot of him and he's, he's burnt to bits. I mean, he's, he's buggered. <laughs> so even just the, just the whole setting and atmosphere and the usage of the John Carpenter score it's just brilliant, it's so brilliantly placed into certain parts I mean I've seen a lot of Halloween fan made films um, and like I said this does not feel like a fan made film it's far from that, it feels like a proper genuine uh, cinematic uh, short film it's been put in like the Blu-ray or DVD extras etc um, just I mean like I said, I've seen loads of them in, in my lifetime and the music is just kind of flung in there just because why not, it's a theme tune, you know, did 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 They've just flung the music in. This feels as if they've such, literally sat and took time of, right, this should go here, this should go here, that should go here. Um, it's beautiful. Even the opening credits is the 2018 uh, opening score and they've got a burning uh, pumpkin, pumpkin, the jack-o'-lantern. It's just, it's beautiful. It's such a good, I mean, obviously it kind of differentiates from the usual opening credits because it's Halloween Inferno, Halloween on fire, Michael Myers is on fire, he's been bumped so the pumpkin is on fire, I like that, it's a good wee kind of, kind of in-house reference there. So we then get Michael obviously going on a, a killing spree as usual, so after killing that guy in the pickup truck, he uses the pickup truck to then pass Sheriff Barker who's uh, talking about what's happened, where's Hawkins, because it, con it obviously continues from Hawkins is now dead, uh, Dr. Kind of the guy, the, the new Loomis basically, he's obviously nowhere to be seen etc, Laurie's been rushed to hospital. So Sheriff Barker, who the guy that plays him in the, the short film, literally looks like the guy in the 2018 film. I thought it was the same guy. It's, it's, it's that uncanny. But obviously we know it's not. So he's then, he's then making confirmed that Hawkins is dead. So Barker's like, damn, we've lost basically the number one cop. Hey ho, that's what it is. <laughs> right, we need to take Michael Myers down. Because obviously, as we know from the 2018 film, 
Um, Hawkins was trying to tell him, listen, it's the same as 1978, it's Michael Myers, we're dubbed, and Barker was just like, Michael Myers? Ooh, it's, I'm scared, as if like, he wasn't really believing the fact that the boogeyman, the shape, is alive and he's released, he's not released, he's broke free, he's out, it's going to be the exact same as 1978, 40 years later, uh oh, <laughs> we need to shut Haddonsfield down. So, Sheriff Barker, by the looks of it, in this film, is now obviously realising shit's hit the fan, we need to just sort this out now. And I'm hoping that they, they uh, execute the way that, I hope they show that in 2020, well, so this year, Halloween Kills, and hopefully they show that in Halloween Kills, they show Barker, the same guy coming back playing Barker, Barker returning, realising he was wrong, and now it's basically full on lockdown on Haddonsfield. So basically COVID-19, <laughs> lockdown, great. Um, but like I said, the settings and atmosphere, everything is just beautifully done. I mean, the shots, even the shots are very cinematic, especially in part two. Part two opens fantastically. Part two opens with young Hawkins. Um, obviously, we know that he was the arresting officer back in 1978. And there was supposed to be a, supposedly a, an opening scene to Halloween 2018 that was going to show, it was going to slightly change the ending of 1978 and show a young Hawkins being the arresting op officer, taking down Michael Myers, and then bang, 2018. There was then rumours that there was, going to be a young, there was going to be a young Hawkins in Halloween Kills, and obviously we know there's flashbacks to 1978, so we can assume we're going to see Michael Myers get arrested. So, but the way they've done it in this was fantastic. I mean, it's exactly what you want to see in Halloween Kills. I mean, again, the cinematic photography is just so beautiful. It's perfectly shot. Part 2, like I said, the cinematic shots, especially in part 2, are as if, the, as if the, the Coleman brothers have upped their ante basically and just went full on like, this is Halloween, this is our Halloween, but it's the exact same feels as every other Halloween film. I mean, there's a scene in uh, some guy's, some dude's garage where he just, Michael just basically has an axe and smashes him and you're just like, what? Even the shot is just right in the chest and the way he walks away, the blood spurting at the chest, it just looks like a Halloween film. I mean, like I said, I've seen numerous Halloween fan made films and they've never had that same feel as a Halloween film. They're just another one of those fan made films that's just shoved on the shelf of fan made films. This film felt like it was part of the Halloween continuity, like, as an, like a DVD extra, like I said, obviously. It was just fantastic and even down to a shot where Michael grabs a blowtorch and he still gets burnt mass to buggery, grabs, grabs a, a blowtorch and like sh just kind of tries to ke heal the wounds of his fingers that he'd lost and you're like, that is bone chilling, damn! It's so good, that shot is so good, the hand looks, obviously the hand's fake, the hand looks real, everything just looks so realistic. Um, and then we find out later on in, part, in Halloween Inferno Part 2 that Hawkins' daughter is then revealed. Um, now, I don't know if there'll be a Hawkins' daughter um, in Halloween Kills, but it, it's a very good B addition, like a whole new B addition to uh, the the forty the, the Halloween two thousand eighteen continuity. That they've in, they've in, they've included a whole new character that will never exist on the big screen versions. So it's pretty good to look back on this to have this is like the small screen version space, the online streaming service versions now. So we have a daughter of Hawkins who then finds out uh, via uh, Sheriff Barker uh, that Barker, the um, officer, dad's dead, um, and Michael killed him. Um, so she then it kind of leave as it leaves at a kind of point where they think she's then going to go and join the manhunt and take down Michael Myers. She's going to be like the Laurie Strode of the Inferno uh, franchise because we've been told that uh, Laurie Strode has escaped from the hospital. Um, which obviously there's going to be a hospital scene in Halloween Kills. Now I don't know if they're going to bring Laurie Strode into Halloween Inferno Part 3 or if they'll just leave her out and just have Hawkins' daughter as like, Hawkins' daughter as like the the Laurie Strode of the Inferno uh, trilogy or the remaining film, the remaining uh, uh, part of the new trilogy. It's just, I mean just to wrap this all up, they are fantastic, uh, well made I don't even want to call them fan-made films because they're so far from fan-made, it's unbelievable. They feel realistic. They're just two short films. The the love for Halloween, the love for Michael Myers, the love for the John Carpenter music, 
a love for the vision that he created back in 1978 to then get continued on by David Gordon Green and Danny McBride in Halloween 2018 which is then going to continue on this year and next year of kills and ends it just these part I mean it's only been part one and part two and they're only like 10 minutes each they just they just bring that a uh, missing piece of the jigsaw, jigsaw between 18 and kills together and it just gels and I was, you would, I, would, I would hope that part 3 has maybe been filmed secretly at some point or will maybe just get quickly filmed before October so that, that can then uh, be like the end game to the Inferno franchise end that and it goes right on to Halloween Kills uh, it's such a beautiful, beautiful uh, love letter to the Halloween franchise John Carpenter uh, David Gordon Green, whatever, they're just fantastic. So James and Vince, like, they're, I mean, I'm a massive Halloween f Halloween fan. So me watching them, they're so beautiful, and there's not much else I can say really. I mean, like the act, even the acting of like the little characters, everything just feels like people have taken their time and their money and just made something beautiful. So yeah. That's basically it. And even down to like, I forgot to mention this actually, there's even like a cameo from uh, Dr. Loomis. So there's a guy who does a, a perfectly eerie Dr. Loomis voiceover cameo from like old tape recordings. And it literally sounds like Donald Pleasance, the original Dr. Loomis obviously. I mean even just like the, the smallest detail like that, Vince and James have taken like the smallest details and made them so majestic and perfect that even when you're listening to them you think you're listening to Donald Pleasance. <laughs> So yeah, um, I'll leave the link below. I'll leave the links in my description below of uh, part one and part two. I'll even leave the link below to uh, Coleman's uh, films Twitter page. Uh, their Indigo, even though it's closed right now, but it will hopefully open again once lockdown is open. Lockdown is done with. Um, and I really want to close my review here by saying I'm going to revisit 2018's Halloween and do a a revised review on that because I watched it just a few weeks ago. And I've been like, that's brilliant. And then when I was like ready to do the reviews for this, you kind of then are like, I want to review 18 as well. And then maybe go back and do reviews for other Halloween films. I mean, I might as well just review them all before Kills happens. So yeah. That's it. <laughs> if you're a Halloween fan, if you're a Halloween fan, watch them. You'll love them. If you're not, if you're not haven't already seen them. And if you're not a Halloween fan, Shame on you! Just, just watch them anyway. They're, they're even for even for the cinematic uh, filmmaking uh, point of view, they're beautiful. Just beautiful films, and that's me. So yeah. <laughs>